What's up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to show you 12 secret Android settings that you might not have known about. A lot of videos out there talk about the Android developer settings and in order to unlock these you need to go to your phone setting menu, you want to scroll to the bottom to where it says about phone, you then want to scroll down again to where you can see your build number and you want to tap on this 7 times. This will unlock Android's developer settings. So why I'm going to show you 12 of my favourite settings that you can tweak in your developer options. If you're left handed you've probably noticed that most user interface design for phones essentially assumes that you're going to be holding your phone in your left hand and interacting it with your right. If you are left handed you can select force RTL layout direction and this will flip everything on your phone. It takes a little bit of getting used to initially but I've talked to some of my left handed friends and they say they still use their Android phone this way. So if you are left handed, try it out and let me know how it works for you in the comments below. Everybody wants to make their phone appear faster and the easiest way to do this is to change your animation speeds. So you've got three different things to play with, you've got your window animation scale, your transition animation scale and your animation duration scale. As you can see, if you set these to a higher number your phone becomes really really slow, however if you set this to a lower number your phone will appear quicker. Now obviously this isn't actually increasing your CPU or anything like that, so if your phone is very slow because it's old, this isn't going to speed it up a huge amount. But if your phone isn't performing as fast as you think it should, this will definitely give it a speed boost. If you've ever tried to fake your location, whether you're playing Pokemon Go or you've got a crazy ex-lover, it might not have worked for you, and that's probably because you haven't selected your mock location application. This will allow you to use apps like Fake Location to trick other apps into thinking you're somewhere else. If you want to make your phone's battery last longer and you want to make it seem quicker overall, the easiest thing to do is monitor all of your running processes. There are certain applications out there, for example Facebook, which is really poorly coded and this means it drains a lot of resources from your phone. This both slows it down and hammers the battery life. You can use your running processes to identify what is hammering your battery or CPU. You can then just stop the app or go ahead and uninstall it. Whilst you can't change the resolution of your phone screen, you can change the DPI and this allows you to increase or decrease the size of content on your phone. If you have a bigger phone and you want to be able to fit more stuff on the screen, you can go ahead and increase your DPI and you'll get a more fablity experience. However, if your phone is a lot smaller or if you're visually impaired, you can decrease your DPI and this will make everything on your screen appear a lot bigger. It's essentially like changing your font size, except this will change everything. If your phone is AMOLED, turning it black and white will not only make you into an outrageous hipster, but it will actually save you some battery life. And in order to do this, you want to go to simulate color space and then choose monochrome. And this will just put your entire phone into a monochromatic black and white. When you buy a phone, you just think the screen that you've given is the one that you get. And that is kind of true, but there's actually two color modes on most Android phones, which you can play with. So the one that you're normally using is going to be RGB mode, and the one that you can turn on is called sRGB. I personally prefer RGB as it's a little bit more poppy and it really complements an AMOLED screen. However, if you want something that's a little bit more true to life and a little bit more muted, then you can always try sRGB. The next setting is unlocking your phone's bootloader, and an unlocked bootloader is the first step to rooting your Android phone. And from here you can install a bunch of different apps that don't normally work or you can install a custom ROM which will completely change your phone's experience. Some devices won't have this option enabled, so if you are running something like a Samsung phone or I think an older LG phone, then you will need to unlock your bootloader manually. Next up we have USB debugging, and this is a necessary step for a lot of applications that run on a PC or a Mac and need to interface with your smartphone. But the main reason you want to turn on USB debugging is so that your phone can interface with a Android developer bridge. This allows you to run ADB commands from a terminal, this will let you push files to your phone or pull them off, and perhaps most importantly this will let you access your phone's bootloader, which is crucial if you're going to be flashing custom ROMs. Next is enabling the force 4 times msaa option in your developer settings. What this does is turns on 4 times multi-sample anti-aliasing and OpenGL ES 2.0 games. This will potentially drain slightly more battery from your phone and it does require slightly more GPU so you do need a newer phone to be able to do this, but this will increase the graphic quality in some of your games. If you're worried about your phone security, you can go ahead and add a password to your desktop backups. This just means if you've ever backed anything up from your phone onto your laptop, it will make that backup file encrypted. This means people can't find the backups that you've saved with your phone and extract sensitive information like passwords and data. 
If you use an old phone as a security monitor or as an extra display or something, you might have realized you can't actually set your phone to turn on all the time when it's charging. However, if you go into your developer options, you can go ahead and tick stay awake, and this means as long as your phone is plugged in, the screen will not turn off. So there you are guys, thank you very much for watching, let me know in the comments below which your favourite setting is. You can follow me on my social media and whatnots with the links in the description, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.